Hey, Bucks fans and Pewter Report viewers, I'm Josh Capo. Um, I thought with the bye week upon us, it'd be a lot of fun to take some of the um, really fun plays from the Saints game. Take a look how new offensive coordinator Dave Canales is having so much success at getting this offense, uh, this new mid-zone play-action-based offense going. The Bucks scored 26 points against a Saints defense that hadn't allowed an opposing offense to score 20 points um, or more in the last 11 games, I think it was. So obviously the Bucks had a lot of things going right. Um, so we're going to take a look at about 12 plays here. I'm going to try and get you out within 20 minutes so you can hopefully say I'm a smarter football fan for this and still have time to take the misses out. So we'll get right into it. Early in the game, Mike Evans was the featured target for the Bucks offense, as he had been through the first three weeks of the NFL season. Um, so we're going to take a look. He had three catches for 40 yards on the day. Two of those catches each went for 18 yards. We're going to profile both of them to start off here. So first play of the game, the Bucks were able to get uh, Evans rolling. And how do they do it? Well, it starts with a uh, personnel package. They went with 12 personnel, one running back, Rashad White, two tight ends, Co. Keith, Kate Otten, lined them up in the backfield and then had them move pre-snap up to the line of scrimmage. This is telling the Saints, we got 12 personnel. You've got Mike Evans on a condensed split, uh, just close to the, the ball here. Um, so Bucks have eight guys up near the, the line of scrimmage and the ball potentially in to block. This looks like a run play. And the Saints re reply in kind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys in the box. They're ready to defend a run. Okay. So everything's looking run. Real quick. This is kind of important. Demario Davis, one of the best linebackers in the NFL, one of the smartest linebackers in the NFL. He's pointing to Chris Godwin. He's telling the safeties behind him, hey guys, if this ends up being a play action pass, look out for Godwin running some type of over route. Over meaning over top of the linebackers, a crosser, a dig, a deep dig, something where he's going to come across the field. And we need to make sure somebody's covering that so it's not an easy play, uh, outlet for Baker Mayfield, okay? So let's get to the play. Davis was right. It's a play-action pass. Uh, the Bucks run uh, play-action off of their mid-zone look, right? Everything's moving to the right, long handoff to white, or it looks like it, right? All the, the whole offensive lineman blocks out to the right, moves the pocket, gives Baker plenty of room here. Keith comes back along the backside on a, a split zone blocking pattern just to make sure he's cleaning up this defensive end and allowing Baker plenty of time to make the throw. All right, so that's what was happening at the line of scrimmage. But let's look at what was happening in terms of the route concept. It's a two route combo. Okay, This is how confident Canales is that his scheme is going to work. I only need to send two guys out. One of them is going to get open. And that's exactly what happened here. Let's go back to what D uh, Davis pointed out. Does Godwin run that over route? Yes, he does. He um, releases to the inside. This is man coverage. Top of his uh, stem. That's an inbreaker. So that's a dig route. Okay. The Saints do a great job of covering this up. Godwin is not open even in the least. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. Because Godwin not only takes his corner and says, you've got to cover me. He takes the same side safety, right? Listen to Davis. He dropped his hips. He's moved inside. I'm going to cut that crosser. I'm going to be under, underneath that. Baker's not going to want to throw that. They perfectly cover this the way Davis wants them to. But there's a little wrinkle here. There are two safeties up top. Tyron Mathieu is on the far side. He's over top of Mike Evans. He should be protecting that vertical route there. But what does he do? He also takes his cue from Davis. Look where his head's at. Look where his hips are. Everything is geared in on Godwin. Godwin's dig route occupies three back-end defenders. Three. One, two, three. And that allows Evans, who gets an amazing release against Marshawn Lattimore. Look at that. That's a jam. Okay? Hand fight, club over. I'm off to the races. Okay? Now, all I have to do is make sure Lattimore doesn't undercut my out, um, my outbreak. So, a little shimmy to the inside, and then... The release to the outside, Baker's throwing with anticipation. He's got separation, perfect play, 18 yards, first down, let's go. You're going to see something very similar from Evans here on this next 18-yarder. Comes from a different look, right? So 
Now you've got twins left offset I look out of 12 personnel. 12 personnel, run one running back, two tight ends. You've got David Wells lined up in the backfield here. Okay. There's going to be motion pre-snap to see, are we getting man or are we getting zone? looks like it might be a uh, zone match, right? Evan uh, Godwin moves in from one to two, and then he's going to release across the field. Play action sucks in. Two different defenders, right? Godwin comes across here, and his man is already trailing, and he is wide open. But he's the second read here. His job is to do exactly what he did, which is clear some defenders. The play action clears some defenders, and Godwin on that vertical, it's not quite a crosser, right? It's a, more of a, a cross seam, a little bit of both. He occupies the single high safety, right? Well, when you take this defender and you take this defender out of the this area and all these other defenders are sucked into the play action, what you're left with is Mike Evans one-on-one -on -one with a corner, okay? Not only that, but from his original slot position, which is condensed split, now he's got all sorts of options in terms of he can release vertically to the inside or to the outside. This puts the corner in almost no man's land. He bends a little bit to the outside to widen the corner before a tiny little shake there, which gets the corner to bite inside. Now we're releasing to the outside. Baker throws, maybe a little late. Okay. But good throw overall. Evans makes a good play. 18 yards, another first down. Okay. Now, Evans isn't in the game for, mo for the entirety of the second half, I believe it was. He was out early. So now who do you turn to? Who's your best receiver? That's Chris Godwin. So let's find him some, some open looks. All right. So it starts here. Another 12 personnel look. This one's uh, from an, Godwin's working condensed. All right, from a, almost like a wing T look. All right, so a few things here. This is a wolf concept with a backside cross to create more of a flood look. What I mean by that wolf concept, from one, Godwin's going to run a short out. From two, Kate Otten is going to run a corner out over top of that. All of this is designed to put this corner of Caleb a Evans in conflict. If he bites down on, uh, on Godwin on the out, then that corner route should open up. He's got easy leverage on the safety here, okay? If Caleb Evans drops deep, protects the vertical, Godwin's there for an easy out. And then what I mean by the flood concept is there's a third receiver. They're flooding this side of the, of the play. Um, he's there as just a, a, a last resort, right? So let's take a look at it. Pre-snap, you see Evans, he's backing up. Caleb Evans is backing up. He's given a lot of room here to Godwin, which means based on his, his vertical leverage, he's probably going to protect the vertical route, which is Otten's corner route. So that means most likely we're going to go to Godwin on the, on the quick out. Baker's going to fake the run. Turn, just a quick check. Yep, he dropped deep. Godwin's open. Grab. Easy first down. Easy looks for Godwin. I want to go back and just kind of look at how much room he has right there. This is college open, right? This isn't just NFL open. Just quick, easy wins. The scheme working to allow the playmakers to get open easily. Sometimes the scheme is going to give you favorable matchups, and that's what happens here. Empty spread, 11 personnel, but let's look at where everybody's lined up. Mike Evans. He's lined up down here to the boundary and the one. That's normal for an X receiver, and he's got a corner lined up against him. Taking away the fact that Mike Evans is probably a Hall of Famer, right? He's one of the better receivers in the NFL. This is probably a matchup advantage just based on player to player. Position to position, this is a push, right? Corner against wide receiver. That's how NFL defenses want to match up against wide receivers. Rashad White in the slot against a linebacker. That makes sense. You get that matchup all day long. But coming up here, the Bucks put KDOT and tight end out on the one, okay, to the field. And the Saints reply by putting a corner on him. Now, this is an advantage for the Saints. KDOT is not Travis Kelsey. He's not going to win one-on-one -on -one against corners very often, okay? But what that does is that balances in terms of a matchup that we're going to get to in just a second. 
Trey Palmer is lined up against a nickel. And then you've got Chris Godwin lined up against Demario Davis. Now I mentioned earlier, Demario Davis is one of the best linebackers in football. It's not supposed to be guarding Chris Godwin one-on-one. And when this ends up being two uh, cover two man, two safeties up top, everybody else is manned up underneath. So when you've got Chris Godwin manned up against Demario Davis, you want to take advantage of that. And that's exactly what the Bucks do. Kate Otten's going to run a vertical route just to clear this corner out of this area, which is where the concept really wants to be. Then you're going to see Trey Palmer and Chris Godwin just running double outs. Okay. Double outs with Godwin up against a linebacker who's already leveraged to the inside. Godwin makes his turn. That's NFL open. Baker knew it, threw with anticipation, grab, turn up field, a couple extra yards, new first down. This got the Bucks out of their own, inside their own 20 and got them driving. Okay. We're going to move to the third quarter here. All right. And you're going to see, here's how we get Godwin open again. Okay. Devin Tompkins is going to go in motion and he's got somebody following him. That's man coverage. All right. So now this play has Godwin coming on a crosser. Now, you know, he's going to be manned up against a Caleb Evans. So the goal here is just give him some room. He's going to beat Evans. That's, you know, something that Canales has got to rely on. He can beat Evans. Now let's just make sure there's not anybody else in his way to take away from that route. So there's going to be play action, which is going to draw Demario Davis in. Okay. Pete Werner, he's lined up on Kate Otten. He's got a man up Otten in this man coverage. We know Godwin's moving this way, and now we know those linebackers are going to be out of the way. But you still have a few other guys who could get in Godwin's way. The first is this corner. We're going to clear him out by taking Palmer on a crosser of his own. All right. Uh, actually, it's more of a seam route. So he's going to push vertically, <coughs> and he's going to take this safety with him. And then Tompkins is going to run a wheel off of his motion, which is going to draw this guy out. So you're going to see all this open space for Godwin. Godwin's the number one read here. And there's the stem. Baker's already into his throw. He knows. Wide open. His back is to this throw. No way he's going to come. He's turned to move vertically with Palmer. Boom. Godwin gets it. More yak. 32 yards. Easy chunk plays. Okay. Now we're going to take a look here. How else can we get Chris Godwin open? Well, we can do it through a little bit of confusion. Palmer comes in motion from three to one. Okay. Watch how the Saints defend this. Palmer's deep speed is going to attract one, two, three defenders. Okay. They know what he can do vertically. One, two, three. All right. Now, the last person you got to get out of Godwin's way is Demario Davis who's faking like he's going to come in as part of a pressure package. He's going to drop immediately. What the Bucks do is they decide to bring Tompkins across the formation on a shallow cross to take anybody in the middle of the field with him. And that's exactly what happens. Davis drops, sees Tompkins. I got to stay on top of him. Now look at all that open space. How did Godwin get there? I well, did it on a return route. Okay. Some people call it a pivot. Some people call it a return. Fake the out. Up. Ah, pivot. There it is. Open daylight. Baker finds him through some contact. And then Godwin's got it. And he's got yards. He's got more yards. He's got all the yards. Down inside the 10. All right, let's see. How else can we get Godwin open? Because they did it a lot. He went for over 100 yards. Sometimes your guy's just better than the other guy. And I want to come back to this a little bit because that is what the previous offense was predicated on. Stuff like this. The, you're going to win. We're going to get you a one-on-one, -on -one, and then you're going to win. That was a lot of the offense. That was way too much of the offense. As you can see, this new offense, it's like, we're going to get you a one on zero, and then you're going to win. But at a feature of this offense is as you go through that and you see who's really feeling it today, who's winning on our side, who's losing on their side, 
every so often, then you go, okay, well, we've got this one-on-one -on -one and maybe the scheme isn't going to let him be wide open, but he's going to be one-on-one -on -one and I feel like he can win that matchup. So then you can layer that in. And by layering that in, you can see safety cheats up. Baker goes, I know I've got a one-on-one -on -one with Godwin against their corner and my guy's going to win. And even though the ball is a little underthrown, Godwin works through the corner, mosses him, contested catch, another first down. Okay. So all of this is getting wins. All right. Now this last one, we're going to see, and this will allow us to transition from Godwin to the other guy who was featured in the second half, which was Devin Tompkins. So one of the big trends in the NFL right now, started by the Miami Dolphins, is taking fast players, getting them some short motion so that they're releasing at high speeds already. And that's what they do with Tompkins here. Tompkins, with that short motion and he turns up field, the Saints have to protect vertically. All right. The safety has to account for that. And what that does is that release allows Godwin to release underneath. Went a little too far here. Give me just a second. So the short motion is going to help clear the outside for Godwin releasing from a condensed split. It's a little out. Easy. Okay. First down. Let's talk a little bit about Devin Tompkins. We've seen him motioning across the formations, and he's helping get other guys' releases. But let's see how the Bucks can win with him, because they won with him a lot. Now, this play, you started with Kate Otten motioning him from one to in tight two over to the boundary. And then Tompkins came in and back out on return motion so that the Bucks could get a real good feel for how the Saints were going to defend this. And in doing so, they see... There isn't that guy following him all the way like there was before, right? And they, they're, what they're able to do with Tompkins is create a release where the defenders are giving way too much space. Baker sees this, play action, just a quick out to the flats. He gets it, easy yards. The Bucks have had some amazingly long, sustained drives through their first four weeks, and a lot of it is through these easy five, six, seven-yard gains that they're getting out of the passing game. Quick outs, speed outs, quick hitches. They're willing to take these easy options when the defense gives it to them. All right. Now let's see. This was one of the most fun plays for me. You're going to see Tompkins here. He's two to the field, Okay. Trey Palmer is one. All right. You can see this is man coverage, pretty easily seen as man coverage. So, how do we give our five foot eight, five foot nine, 170 pound receiver an easy release? We're going to just let him shadow. Okay. I call this a shadow route. Palmer releases inside. You've heard of stunts and twists on the um, defensive line. Well, they kind of do the same thing here with the receivers. He releases vertically and allows Tompkins to come underneath as if he's going to run a slot fade. A Caleb Evans has to account for that. Got to protect deep. Don't want him to beat me over the top. He's going to have days of room. Tompkins gets underneath that and then immediately turns for a little slant, grabs it, moves upfield. Okay. Put defenders in conflict. All right. For the next one for Tompkins... This is how, as a number three or number four receiver, you find more work. This is how you get more snaps. All right, pre-snap, we're going to bring it back just a little bit here. This is your concept side, okay? You got three receivers to the right, to the field. Tompkins is the X receiver to the left. He's lined up on Marshawn Lattimore. If you're Baker Mayfield, you're looking at this. This is not an advantage, okay? So you're not going to look this side. Everything's going to be to this side, okay? However, the play doesn't go very well, all right? Nobody's open. Baker tries to pump fake, see if he can get somebody open, nothing. Now we're on scramble drill, okay? Now we're going to back up. How do we get here? Let's take a look at Tompkins. So again, he's not the featured. He's not one. He's not two. He's not three. He's maybe the fourth read in the progression. Marshawn Lattimore knows this. And he starts to slack off. 
he sees the pressure on Baker, he's going to get sacked. He hasn't been paying attention. Baker just doesn't get sacked, apparently, this year. Okay, So Tompkins, seeing all this going on, he starts to work. He doesn't give up on the play. He says, hey, I'm open. Okay, Lattimore gets a little lazy. There's a lot of separation. Baker finds him. Okay, And then the kid's sudden. He's going to make some moves, and he's going to get some yards. This is the biggest game for Tompkins on the day. And it was all because he kept working. He didn't give up on a play, even though he was the fourth read. Never should have been looked at. Okay. All right. Now, how else can we get Tompkins involved? Well, we're going to put him in motion. And we're just going to give him the ball. Because he's fast. He's sudden. He can get yards on his own. Let's bring that back a little bit. The Bucks basically didn't even have to block this. Okay. This was just all him. The Saints weren't ready for it. They're not used to all these end arounds, these pop passes that the Bucks have been running. Look at that. He's already got leverage on this defender, who's really the only guy he's got to beat. Pete Werner comes in, right? Thinking that it was a run to White, and he's beat. Mike Evans just has to be a little bit of a screen player. That's 11 yards. That's an explosive run. The Bucks' offense is exciting. They're taking their be best players and saying, how can we leverage their talents and put them in the best position to succeed? They're not relying on them to win one-on-one. -on -one. They're saying, can we make it a one-on-zero? And in doing so, they are creating a lot more offense. It's really exciting to watch. It was exciting for me to break down these plays, and I hope it was exciting for you to watch them with me. So for Pewter Report, I'm Josh Capo.